My name is Dean Calamus. I work for the architect of the Capitol as a decorator painter leader, and I'm assigned to the Library of Congress. And this is my office. This is where I work. The painters who decorated this building, uh, they, were, they were proud of what they did. I, I just, I feel a kinship to them because they uh, produced something spectacular. I would like to have a plaque with all their names on it and put it up here in the library someplace because they're my heroes. We're entering the Great Hall of the Thomas Jefferson Building at the Library of Congress. This is our most significant public space. You can see for yourself the level of ornamentation that goes on in here. Our responsibility is to make sure that any areas of loss, any in-painting that have to be done, match both in color and in sheen, and that we do as little work as possible to make the repair. Every time we do a job, we try not to make any assumptions, we try not to take any liberties, because we learn on a regular basis that if we follow the research, we get a result that's better than we'd even anticipated. All this stuff fits together, you know, it was painted in a certain way for a reason. And with different paint campaigns over the hundred years of the building, we'd, it gotten away from the original intent. McEwen is the muralist in this building. Uh, he used a specific palette for his work. Elmer Garnsey was the chief decorator for the Library of Congress. He was expert at picking colors that would harmonize with both the stonework and with the muralist efforts. We originally replicated this hallway 15 years ago, but we returned to it recently because there's been some water damage around three of the window frames. We had to peel back the overpaint and take a look at the original paint. These are pieces of the uh, original paint before the replication. The first thing was make an exposure window. The exposure window in this case was like very easy to make because there was poor adhesion between the new paint and the historic paint. The new paint was latex, the historic paint was oil. This was the replication of the original scheme. And this is the original scheme here. They decided to uh, gild the band and they decided to uh, paint the back part of the wrap of the ribbon. Okay, our wall's been uh, prepped and primed. So the first thing we're gonna do is put down our base coat. And in this case, we're gonna, work, we're gonna walk over a white primer because that's what we found evidence for in the original. The range of colors that we mixed this from was pretty much an earth palette. We pretty much got a red oxide and a yellow ochre and a little bit of white. Now that the base coat is dry, we're gonna apply the glaze coat. The glaze is a transparent color over the opaque ground. Ron is applying the glaze, so I'm going to let him describe what he's doing and why he's doing it. The glaze has a feeling of depth, that you're not just on a flat surface, that you can see through it and the light reflects back out and that color becomes much more richer and vibrant. There's a tendency to want to go to acrylics and latex, but I prefer the natural materials that this building was originally painted with. So that's why this particular hallway is painted with the linseed oil base. Painters before me would have done it the exact same way. Okay, our red glaze is dry. We're gonna paint a raw sienna band around the border. Dominic's gonna help us snap a line, so we've got a guide for the inside of our band. We use chalk so that the remnants can be cleaned off. Once the paint is dry, it's just a matter of snapping two lines as guides so we can paint our half-inch stripe. This lining stick has a, a cup, has a two sides to it, a curved side and a straight side. It's got a beveled edge. That keeps uh, the bottom of the stick off the surface of the wall. You want to keep your paint kind of thin and loose for this. You don't want it to be too gummy. I've been here for 15, and this stick's probably been here for at least 50. This stick was here when I, when I started working in the building. All right, and for the next step, we're just going to print our stencil. And uh, for printing, we just use Mylar and a little bit of a movable spray mount. So I'm going to place this stencil centered on the half inch stripe. So the best way to print a stencil is almost dry with the roller. And then originally when they applied this light, they applied it with a stencil. But uh, it seemed unnecessary to cut a stencil. So uh, we've got something they didn't have. We have a uh, painter's tape and it's very low tack. So there's very little danger of it pulling up other paint. This white paint is actually dry now. I'm gonna want a soft brush for this because it's just a tiny bit of paint and I'm working on a smooth surface. So. You know, for this little bit of paint, we'll typically palette match our colors as we go. So we, we, we try and pretty much pick up where we left off before, so I'm going to put a little bit up here and see how it is in tone. It's a little bright, so I'm going to take it down a little bit more before I go too much further. This paint is dry now. And to finish this off, 
we just need a little yellow ochre underneath each band. It basically acts as a cast shadow, but it's very soft. It's very subtle, but it was there originally, so I'm going to use my tape again because it'll help me move more quickly. I need to thin my paint out, but I'm not going to want it to be drippy. So I'll try and keep my brush a little dry. And then I'm going to lean on my mall stick here just to keep my hands steady. I'm just going to rub them in lightly. They're just a light glaze, really. Every little dark is going to make it stand out just a tiny bit. And then after that's done, I'm going to come back with some thicker paint of the same color, and I'm just going to reinforce it along the top edge a little bit, just, again, to pop that piece a little bit more. I've learned a lot since I've come here. I've learned a lot about uh, good decoration because I've gotten to spend so much time around it. There's a lot of talented people that contributed to this building. And, uh, and there'll be a lot of talented people that will come after I'm gone. The, the work we do really is just a little bit of icing on top of the cake. But to be a link in that chain and contribute to that legacy is an honor and a privilege. It's what drives our efforts here every day.